So I'm going to create a, another service called Simulate, which is going to simulate the backend service that would return the available cars. And maybe later, if enough people are interested, I'll move the simulation service to a Node.js server. So I'm going to mock the data that would be returned from a server with a list of available cars, each one having an ID and its current location. And we're going to need to create several of these dummy data responses. So each time this getCars method is called from the car service, it returns the updated locations of the available cars. So now that I have a couple cars in this dummy data, I'm going to duplicate this for five responses. So that we'll have five data points to simulate the moving of the available cars. And I'll store these in a list so that we can just iterate through it each time the get cars method is called. And I'll also add in the index that we're going to use to iterate through our list. So now all that's left is to implement our get cars method by returning different car data each time the method is called. So we're going to return an observable just like an HTTP request would return an observable and make the response the mock data of the available car. And given this method will be called every two seconds, we'll eventually reach the end of our mock data list. So in that case, let's start it back at the beginning to create an infinite list. And you may be wondering where we get our mock data from. So you can use a website like this to click anywhere on the map to get a latitude and longitude. For this to work the best, you'll want to pick a location where you're currently working on this app and pick a road around where you are and just trace a circle out at, at different points for each car that you want to simulate. And then you'll just be able to copy and paste the latitude and longitude and replace that in the mock data. So now we're ready to use our simulation service in our car service. So I like to rename my services to make it clear what they are when I import them. So I'm going to create an instance variable to store my simulation service and I'll initialize it inside my constructor. Since the simulation service replaces the HTTP service, I'm going to remove that from the constructor. And now I can make the call to my simulation service to get cars every two seconds, which now completes the get cars method in our car service and will allow us to implement our fetch and refresh cars in our component. So this is where we would pass in our current location, but since we're simulating this with hard-coded data, I'm just going to put in some numerical values for now. And so when we get back our car data, we want to put this on our map only if the pickup has not been requested. So we're going to loop through each car and add a marker to our map. And if the marker is already on the map, we're going to update its current location. And I'll keep track of my car markers with a class variable. So when I create a new one, I'll add to this array. And if the marker has already been added to our map, then we'll just update its position. And we'll just use the Google Maps marker again for this. But this time for the icon, we're going to use a new icon um, that I've created called car icon. And we're going to add this to our image folder along with the pickup pin that we've already added.
And we're going to give our car marker an ID so we know which car marker to update with the new position as we receive updates in our fetch and refresh method. And since Google Maps inherits from the MVC object, we can add a property using this set ID. And now I'll just finish up my update car markers by setting the position to its new location if it already exists in our car markers list. Now I'm going to go in and add my car icon image. And you'll see that it's just a frontal view of a car. We're not doing a top-down image because we're not going to be showing the direction the car is traveling in. That would be an extra level of complexity to simulate and it's something we can add in later when we have real car data tracking. So for now, to finish up, I'm going to add the car service in as a provider to our available cars. And I'm going to change my import of observable to get the methods I need for interval and switch map. And now we can test this out. And we see the cars are jumping around a little bit. So let's look at how we can smooth out that animation. Fortunately for us, someone has already written a library that does exactly this. So it's called Marker Animate Unobtrusive, or Sliding Marker, and it simply inherits from Google Maps Marker and gives us animation capabilities. Each time the position is updated, it'll animate to that new position. So we're going to use npm to install it, and then we're going to import it into our available cars using a slightly different syntax using require. And then to replace our Google Maps marker is going to be straightforward because it inherits from Google Maps marker. So we'll just replace it with sliding marker. And then it gives us access to these new animation attributes like the duration of the animation, which we'll set to two seconds. And the easing function of our animation is going to be linear. So we can see now that this looks much better. But whoops, I noticed a little bug. Our locator element is still visible after our Google Maps marker has been created for our pickup pin. So I'm just going to hide that if the pin is set. Okay, that looks better. So now in our available cars, if the is pickup is requested, which will detect in the on changes implementation for this component, then we want to remove the available car markers because the only car that should be visible is the car that's coming to pick you up. So we're just going to loop through our car markers array, remove each car, and set the map of the marker to null to remove it from the map. And then we'll be able to see this when we test it out by requesting to be picked up, and the cars disappear, and then canceling the cars reappear. So that looks pretty good.